what are your thoughts on the sort of like the idiosyncratic challenges with with the current gen of AI, like uh, yeah. hallucinations and things like that? Is there are those just engineering problems that we're going to get around, or are they always going to be like the little ghost in the machine back there popping up to wreck your estimate? So how how does it work today? Right? How does like a large language model, whether it be Llama or whether it be Claude or ChatGPT, how do they work? It's predicting the next, literally the next word, right? Like it's just a predictive yeah. model that strings it all together based upon context. So if you can set the appropriate context up front, the probability of a hallucination downstream is minimized. So what would you do to set the right context? you can fine tune, train models in and around a particular task or objective. And then you can have multiple models. So like think of it as a multi-model, multi-agent approach that has different context windows that are trained and fine tuned in and around a particular task. So if you have a scoper, if you will, they're going to act a little bit differently than maybe an agent that you've trained specifically for coverage let's call it conversation, based upon you know, the, the various forms the, and endorsements that are part of that policy. So if you can keep the models trained for specific use and set within the right context windows, then you're going to get outsized results as opposed to trying to use the tool for an unintended uh, use case, right? Like sure. the hammer you know, being used as uh, or actually a screwdriver being used as a hammer, which all of us have done at one point. <laughs> so really, I think, I think broadly speaking, what it sounds like is happening is that the promise of computers uh, making our lives easier by automating repetitive tasks and that sort of thing that we got decades ago is now just now kind of like starting to come into its own where, especially with insurance claims, like you said, there's a lot of policy forms and, you, you, and then you increase the complexity of the, the loss, <clears throat> maybe it's condos, maybe there's multiple coverages that are activated in, in a particular loss. And there's a lot to, to sort of process, but there's really only one way to, to do it, right? There's really only one outcome that just, it's the puzzle and it only goes together one way, right? There's not like, you know, you could, it could be argued, I think, that things could be open to interpretation, but I don't know that that when it really, really gets down to the sort of the brass tacks that it really is. And I, so I don't think it's, it doesn't sound like the, I don't know if the, if the, the last mile problem with this is just like, you know, in a particular carrier, getting all of their systems like to all talk to each other and be sort of like have a brain to it that can, you know, when you, the, some, the person takes the FNOL and it gets automatically routed to the field or to the to the homeowner, you know, t tapping a link on their phone and walking around their house or whatever it is. And it just kind of like does those things, does those tasks or, you know, go into the adjuster, especially on a, you know, more complex losses um, and help, help making it so that they don't miss stuff so that the, the promise that the carrier has to the homeowner, it can be fully fulfilled, right? No foot dragon, no trying to save money on the claim or whatever. It's this is it is what it is, and you know, actually the 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 machine learning and the AI is so good that there's other little pieces of the policy that get you know that pop up and say, oh well, we we also owe you this too. That might have been missed by everybody in the in the process until a lot later if it ever got caught. If you're a brand new adjuster working for a major IA firm, you will most likely already be covered under a blanket errors and emissions policy. You probably already pay something like five or $10 per claim for this coverage. And what is errors and emissions? Well, if you're accused of messing something up on a claim, your E and O insurance will step in and help you out. But what if you cause damage or injury on a field inspection? For example, your ladder falls down and smashes the insured's brand new Ford F-150 Lightning then a general liability policy will cover you in that instance. Again, you likely have a little bit of protection through your IA firm as a newbie adjuster. However, if you've got a year or two under your belt and you make most or all of your annual income from claims work, then you owe it to yourself to upgrade your E&O and general liability coverages to be customized to you. 
And depending on how many claims you run in a year, there's a very good chance these policies will be cheaper for you with your own coverages. Better and cheaper? Sign me up. There's only one company that provides E&O and general liability solely to the insurance industry, and that is CPLIC, aka Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And with more than 700 videos, there's plenty more to watch here on Adjuster TV. Don't know where to start? Just go to my videos page here on YouTube and type in a search term right here to find an answer to almost any question you have about property claims handling. And we'll see you in the next one.